derivatives of the skin. Of all the various organs that the human body is made of, the skin is the largest of them all. While it protects our internal organs, it also gives each one of us our distinct appearance. You may not realize this, but our nails and hair form a part of our skin. Together with other glands of the human body, they are known as the derivatives of the skin. Let us first take a look at hair. A single hair consists of three parts, hair shaft, hair root and hair bulb. The hair shaft is the part that projects obliquely from the skin. It may extend slightly below the surface of the epidermis. The strength of the hair shaft is maintained due to the arrangement of the protein keratin into several filaments that lie at the heart of the hair. The hair root is the part embedded within the dermis. The lowest part of the hair root is expanded to form a hair bulb. The hair bulb contains a projection of the dermis called hair papilla with capillary blood supply. The structure that encloses the hair root is known as the hair follicle. It is composed of an epithelial and a connective tissue sheath. The hair bulb and the hair follicle are responsible for the growth and elongation of hair. Growth of hair takes place due to addition of cells at the base which soon die. Our hair continuously falls and grows again. The duration of scalp hair is 2 to 5 years while that of our eyebrows and our lashes is 3 to 5 months. The color of our hair varies depending on the quantities of the pigment, melanin. The gray or silver color of hair occurs due to minute air spaces formed in the hair when melanin is lost. Have you noticed that sometimes when you feel cold, your hair stands on end and you develop bumps on your skin? This is referred to as goose pimples or goose flesh. It can also occur when you experience a heightened emotion. When goose pimples or goose flesh is formed, it gets lifted. This is known as piloerection. The surface of the skin around the hair develops a contracted and wrinkled appearance. Piloerection takes place due to the erector muscle that runs obliquely between the hair follicle and the outer part of the dermis. When this muscle contracts, it pulls the hair on one hand and depresses the epidermis on the other. The primary function of hair is to provide protection against the outside agents. Eyelashes prevent the entry of dust particles water droplets, etc., while hair in the nostrils prevent entry of dust particles into the nasal passages. Hair also provides the sensation of touch. This is due to the nerve fibers that extend up to the base of hair. This makes hair sensitive to touch as well as movements of air. However, Hair is not present all over the body. It is absent in certain places such as the lips, the palms of our hands, as well as the soles of our feet. Nails are another derivative of the skin. They are hard, keratinous, plate-like structures that grow as dead cells from the nail root. In case of the nail, the plate is the hard outer part composed of dead cells while the bed or root lies below the plate. The grooves along the sides of your nail help keep the nail in place. The matrix is the tissue upon which the nail rests and lies below the surface of the skin at the base of the nail. 
It is visible as a white half moon known as the lunula. The matrix produces new cells which on maturation push the older ones towards the tip of the nail. This causes our nails to grow. Nails protect our fingers and toes and the surrounding tissue from injuries. They also enable us to grip objects more efficiently. The sebaceous glands open into the hair follicle or directly onto the skin. They release an oily secretion known as sebum which makes our hair and the surface of our skin oily. Sebum also makes our skin waterproof, keeps the epidermis supple and prevents loss of water due to evaporation. During winters, our skin may become rough and dry due to reduced secretion of sebum. In summers, skin and hair become more oily due to increased secretion of sebum. The sebaceous glands that we discussed earlier are distributed all over the skin. However, they are the most concentrated on the face and the scalp. Mybomian or tarsal glands are modified sebaceous glands that open on the margin of the eyelids. They lubricate these margins and prevent overflow of tears. Sebum accumulation can result in growth of bacteria. This causes an infection and leads to the formation of boils known as pimples. Pimples usually form on the face. Sometimes the sebaceous glands get enlarged due to sebum accumulation. On oxidation, melanin and sebum give it a black color and form a black head. Acne is a condition in which sebaceous glands get inflamed. This is primarily due to hormonal changes and is very common in adolescents. Another important component of the skin are the sweat glands that help in regulating the temperature of our body and cooling the surface of our skin. Each sweat gland consists of a deep secretory part and an excretory part that opens on the surface of the skin. The coiled secretory part of the sweat gland absorbs fluid from surrounding cells and blood capillaries of the dermis and passes it on to the excretory sweat duct. The sweat duct opens onto the skin as sweat pores. There are nearly 2 million sweat pores on the human body. Sweat consists of 99% of water, 0.2 to 0.5% of salts such as sodium chloride and traces of urea. The urea lost through the sweat is about 1% of the total urea excreted by the body. Sweating occurs at all times. When it occurs in minute quantities, it is referred to as incipient or invisible perspiration. It also occurs in large quantities, for example, during exercise or strenuous activity. Cold sweat may occur due to fear, nervousness or may accompany sickness such as nausea and body pain. The mammary or milk glands are modified sweat glands. While they exist in a rudimentary state in males, they develop as breasts in females during puberty. Each breast has a dark circular area known as the areola. The conical projection present on the areola is called the nipple. About 15 to 20 milk ducts open into the nipple. These ducts branch inwards and join a cluster of lobes in the mammary glands. The ducts supply milk during the period of lactation 
due to the hormone prolactin. Thus, mammary glands play an important role during pregnancy. Seruminous glands are another type of modified sweat glands. They are located in the auditory canal and secrete a waxy substance, cerumen or ear wax, which lubricates and protects the eardrum from dust particles and germs. To conclude, we can say that the derivatives of the skin have numerous functions and without them, the human body would not function as efficiently as it does.